Hi, welcome to the program. I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. Hanging out today with Hillary Bettis. Hi. 72 miles to go. It's coming. <laughs> Yeah. New prey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Really nice to meet you. So nice you're you completely too. in the thick of things right now. So in the thick of it. Opening night is coming up yeah. in early March. Yeah. What has this whole process been like for you overall? It's been so many things. <laughs> it's been all of the things. I mean, it's been exciting and overwhelming and like getting to work at Roundabout, which is mm -hmm. one of the best theaters in the world. Um, getting to work with an incredible cast and getting to work with Joe Bonnie, who's an incredible director. Like, all of that has been very magical, but it's also, like, we're trying together to find what this play is, mm -hmm. and that is, like, a lot of ups and downs and a lot of, like, sleepless nights, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> so what would you like this play to be? Like, you guys are doing previews right now. Yeah. What do you think it is now, and what would you like it to be? I mean, I think really close like ultimately what's most important is that we tell the story of this family with empathy and dignity and that is like put in front of anything else mm -hmm. you know and so and I and, and I feel like everybody is really passionate about it everybody's heart is really in the story um, we're working with this amazing cast um, many of whom like grew up on the border and so this is also like very familiar to their own lives and their own um, identities. And, you know, and of course, like, we want it to be a beautiful theatrical experience as well. We want, like, like the writing and the acting and the design and all of that stuff to, like, really click and come together. But I think ultimately, as long as an, an audience walks away with, like, a bigger, deeper understanding of who these people are, I think then we've really done our job. So this is obviously an emotional story. Did you always envision yourself telling a story like this, or is this something that kind of sprung on you the last couple of years? Yes and no. I mean, I, I've i always, like, really sort of written about um, the, like, Mexican-American Chicano identity mm -hmm. and the border. Um, I've written, like, multiple plays and pilots and screenplays and things that all sort of, like, circle around this particular subject. Um, you know, like my own family, my, my mother actually grew up in Tucson, Arizona mm -hmm. where the play is set, my grandfather's Mexican, right. and so I think part of like my desire to write a, through this particular lens long before it was like ever a conversation in the, you know, the news headlines and mm -hmm. the zeitgeist was like to understand my own family and to understand where we came from and who we are and how we ended up in this country and, you know, how I ended up getting to be a writer in yeah. the first place in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, so it's something that I've, like, really, really, like, dabbled in in a lot of different, like, genres and directions and things like that, but... What would you say fascinates you the most about peeling back the layers of Mexican-American identity and just really, like, your whole family history, in yeah, a sense? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I, I think there's sort of... Uh, it's oh my god, that's such a complicated question. <laughs> I like you know so my 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 grandfather and my uh, like really came from like a family that believed that you have to like assimilate and be more American than mm -hmm. Americans, and so you have to sort of cut off this part of your identity. Like for example, Spanish was his first language, but he like tried to hide it from my grandmother, tried to hide it wow. from my mother. My mother didn't know that he spoke Spanish until she was like. 18. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And like, and Tucson is an incredibly bilingual yeah, totally. border town. And so like to make that active conscious choice has been really sort of heartbreaking mm. and really fascinating at the same time and really trying to understand like what was his life like and his childhood like that, that drove him to this. And, but it was always like at the same time, a big part of like my own family's, like how we thought about ourselves and how we talked about ourselves. Mm -hmm. and. So, you know, it, it's very much been in, like, conflicts with each, with each other. Like, how do we be American, but also how do we, like, embrace this part of who we are? And how do we, um, you know, and so I think, and, like, digging into this play and digging into this family, because all of these characters have, like, very different perspectives of what that means. Like, they're a mixed status family. You know, um, Anita, the mother, really very similar to my grandfather, very much tried to, like, shield her mm -hmm. kids from what like all of the pain and suffering that she went through and for her that meant like denying this part of herself and so two of the kids are born in the u.s one was born in mexico but came to the united states as a child and so everybody in this family is sort of grappling with like well what does this mean for me and how do i like marry these two identities which i think is like something that my family is 
really struggled with our entire existence. Yeah. I think a lot of people have struggled with that yeah. because you can make the argument that for some people it's easier to just put it all away. Yeah. But at the same time, it is a heartbreaking thing because that's who you are yeah. and it's important to embrace yeah. your identity. And I feel like now we're in a place that you can do that, yeah, but there are sure. still challenges with it. So I'm for sure it's sure. really interesting looking at your grandfather's generation versus yeah. your generation and how that's yeah. been different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And even Absolutely. just being able to do this play, like this wasn't a play necessarily you could have done five or ten years ago in the yeah. same space. Like yeah. the fact that there's the runway to do that, I'm sure is a really cool thing. It, so like, have you is. been able to have deeper conversations with your family as a result of all this? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I, I've definitely like, you know, and my mother and my aunts and, and cousins and really been like trying to put together a genealogy mm -hmm. of like, you know, and a lot of my cousins also grew up on the border and on both sides of the border. And there's still a lot of like fear around being able to even talk about mm. this, um, which is really fascinating. And you know, uh, like yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I've really like uncovered a lot about even the things that like my mother has gone through growing up, and like the prejudices that she's faced, and the things that she's still dealing with now, but is like struggles to talk about. You know, for example, like she had. A neighbor slammed the door in her face. A neighbor that she's known for like 30 years. Wow. Like slammed the door in her face and like say that they don't want Mexicans to come to their house, you Jeez. know? And so it's like, it's, it's, but again, these are things that are like, we sort of, I think, have tried to pretend like they weren't there to survive. Right, but they've been happening forever, yeah. and they're most importantly still happening. Yeah, and That's the reason yeah. why we need to talk about this stuff. Yeah, totally. And even though this is based in Tucson, like here in New York City, there's yeah. plenty of this stuff going on. Yeah. So what's it been like kind of taking that Arizona story, the border story, and bringing it here into a New York City world where it's the biggest melting plot, and yeah. people certainly have all these issues to talk yeah, about. Yeah, for sure. And like the Latinx you know, population here that's like, New York and mm -hmm. Dominican has like a very different relationship than you know the Mexican American experience, and so it's been really interesting in terms of like how people respond to this particular um, culture and story. But like ac across the board, so far it's been, I think it's really really touched people. Um, I mean, we've gotten like we've gotten like standing ovations mm. already in previews. That's which, really like, cool. Never happens because we're still like. What the hell is this? Thing? <laughs> We're you still know? working out the kinks. Yeah. No, this story really yeah. resonates with people for a reason. Yeah, definitely, which is really exciting. It's yeah. really, really exciting. Absolutely. So you've had an interesting journey just in terms of your, your TV writing for the yeah. Americans and doing a bunch of different things. What's it been like for you to navigate and what have been some of the circumstances that have just kind of blown your mind overall with what you've done? Um I mean, I am um, I think I'm always surprised when I get an opportunity to, what, like an especially an opportunity that like pays the bills. But like right. when you get an opportunity to just like keep writing, because you That's always huge. sort of yeah. yeah, you always feel like the next the job you have is probably going to be the last job and right. the end of your career. <laughs> <laughs> and because then, it's so hard to cut yeah. through. It's so hard to get another job. It's so it hard really to have something is. be successful. And like The Americans has been a show that has yeah. actually cut through, which is a yeah. cool thing. Yeah, I mean The Americans was. An incredible, amazing uh, experience. I mean, I had never worked in TV before. I'd mm. never written a TV script before uh, working on that show, and so I definitely felt like a little bit of a fraud mm. in a lot of ways. Like, I didn't, you know, I, I had to like hide that I had no idea what I was doing, <laughs> <laughs> and really kind of teach myself how to write a TV script. Um, but, but I, I also feel like I was able to write this play because of what I learned working on that show. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the, the, the efficiency that we wrote with and the, you know, that you need to marry like tone and plot and character and you need to do it in a really succinct, compelling way, which I think is what made that show so right. special. And that was really a lesson that like I have taken to heart with this particular story. I gotcha. Yeah. So now you're doing a couple pilots as well. So what's yeah. it like kind of throwing yourself into all that? And like, what, what don't we talk about enough in terms of like trying to get a pilot green lit oh and just like, God. just that whole process? Like what, what, what can we learn from that from your experience? It's, uh, I mean, first of all, I think the biggest thing that I've learned is that like nobody really knows what they want, hmm. you know? And I think everybody's sort of like trying to write like what's popular or what they think will sell but the truth is that like everybody's just like looking for something that hits them in the gut and mm -hmm. speaks to them whether they're like tv executives or actors or directors or whatever and so i think trusting that part of who you are and like 
trying to cut out the noise and the bullshit, which is so much easier said <laughs> than done. <laughs> but I think that's really been the biggest takeaway. I mean, you know, I've, I've sold like five pilots okay. at this point in my career, and I have nice. two that I'm currently, I have one at AMC and one at Hulu that I'm currently like in the trenches mm -hmm. of. But it's, it's really about like trusting my instincts and saying like this is something that I really love and and the producers inevitably are along for the ride with you. I mean like good producers are, right. you know. That's the important thing is like it, it strikes a chord with you and then you find a producer or an actor yeah. or an executive who's interested in it. Yeah. And then that's how you're going because yeah. at the same time like it's really hard to figure out what people are going to like. Like yeah. we, we don't necessarily know that Stranger Things is going to become a big deal yeah, or the Americans sure. is going to become a big deal like it's a slow burn with some of these things. So I'm sure as a writer, sure. it's like, I can try and write for people, but yeah. that would just be exhausting. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. I hear you. So you went to Juilliard, right? I did. When you think about your Juilliard experience, what stands out the most from the past? I loved it. You know, I, so I didn't go to school. I like ran away to LA when I was 18. <laughs> we got out of high school. Had like no desire. I hated school. You weren't I about it. Barely made it through high school. I like grew up, my family was a lot growing up, but I, I um, finished high school in this like really rural small Minnesota wow. very like conservative that uh, must have been pretty interesting for town. you <laughs> yeah yeah oh, yeah and so like by my my sophomore year I was like this is I'm not doing this mm. so so I moved to LA like a, literally a week after I graduated um and roughed it in LA for a couple of years <laughs> uh and uh yeah and, and like really discovered writing and my passion for writing mm -hmm. when I was when I was there and so getting a fellowship to Juilliard for me was like really my first experience in any sort of academic institution like most of the really pretty much all of my classmates there had like their undergrad and their MFAs mm -hmm. and had like you know seven years of being in these sorts of environments and you were totally different from that. yeah <laughs> and I think on the one hand I really being in that program really like taught me what it means to be a serious writer that you have to you can't just write when you feel mm -hmm. inspired and compelled and you want to write you have to write like every day you have right. to be disciplined about it you have to like figure out how to restructure like i was like bartending and like crawling home at 7 a.m doing like, whatever it takes right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and like hungover yep. and, well, you know that whole lifestyle and i was like oh wait if i'm actually really serious about this i can't i gotta put in the time yeah. here <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> For that's sure. uh, that's unbelievable. I think one of the cool things about today is that people can look at your story and and be inspired by Latinx women being in a position yeah. to tell stories. Like when you were younger, who were the people that you looked to? Because things are a lot different from when we were growing up to yeah. compared to what we have now. So who are some of the people that inspired you? I mean, I have always loved uh, Martian Roman's mm -hmm. writing. Like she was one of the first playwrights I ever read, and so it was really awesome to like get to study under her at Juilliard. Um, Stephen Eiley Girgis is another writer that I've like been in love with for a very long time and um, Sam Shepard mm -hmm. you know I mean I think people that like are not are unapologetic about class mm. um, yet and, and and race but still write it with such compassion and dignity and empathy and I think that there's not a lot of writers that I think those are three writers that can really do that quite well you know, and that's sort of like the world that I grew up in. And so to find stories that, you know, especially like when I was younger, like in L.A. and mm -hmm. Hollywood and like all the movies of like mid 2000s and all <laughs> of that were like, yeah. you know. A lot of fluff to those yeah, movies in the early 2000s. Yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. And so I think when I discovered those stories and was like, oh, these writers are giving people like my me and my family and people that I know and grew up with not just a, a voice, but like doing it with such like specificity mm -hmm. and care and honesty and and dignity like that was something that has really struck with me and something that like I try to continue in, in all of my work. Right. And there's a lot more authenticity when it is somebody who actually went through that yeah. story who's telling the story yeah, as opposed sure. to a white man who's trying to tell a story right. of a young Latinx girl. Like right. that's just not going to hit in the same way, right? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Unless it's Stephen Adley Gurk. Right. It's Unless like a special, <laughs> right. special human being. Right. There's only a few people that can really yeah. nail that. But, but I think it's because he grew up he grew up in that environment. He grew up right. with those people. It's like, what you know. It's yeah. what you're around and you could talk about yeah. it. And that's like wh what you said I think was really important like the class and race thing because it's really yeah. easy sometimes to tell a race story, but yeah. class story can be a really difficult thing sure. to get people to understand. For sure. But it's cool that we can just unpack that, whether it's in theater, yeah. TV, film, so yeah, come a long way with it. Definitely. 
Definitely. So when people check out your play uh, coming up in a few months, yeah. what are the big takeaways you want them to have? I mean, ultimately, I want them to l see this as an American family and not a family of, you know, an immigrant story or an other story, but like a story of who all of us are. Mm -hmm. um, I really want them to be able to fall in love with this family and see their own lives and their their own families in all of these characters. You know, I mean, I really tried to focus the play on like these sort of like everyday rites of passage mm -hmm. that happen to all of us, whether it's like going to prom or graduating or getting married or having babies. And the backdrop is really dealing with like immigration and how do we keep our family together. But the like the forefront for all of these characters is these very universal things that I think we all go through in our lives. Um, and so that ultimately, like, I feel like if an, that can resonate with an audience, then maybe we can have a deeper understanding of all of this very complicated, you know, rhetoric that's in our media right now around immigration and who these people really actually are. Yeah, well said. Hillary, nice to meet yeah, you. Yeah, so nice Thanks to meet you. Thanks so much. Too. Why don't you tell everybody when they can check out the play and where it is and all yeah, that fun stuff? Yeah, 72 Miles to Go is at Roundabout. We open March 10th. Uh, tickets are online right now. There you go. For Hillary, I'm DJ. See you next time. Bye. Here on the sit down.